Today I'll show you how to use Photoshop libraries to extract color from any image and then use those colors to color grade any image that you'd like. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I really love to color grade images and I've recently done a video, which I'll link at the end of this video, on color grading with gradient maps. Today I want to show you how you can use Photoshop libraries to extract colors from any image that you would like. Now they have to be either a JPEG or a PNG file, but you can go online to stock agencies and grab images or do screenshots or whatever of anything that you would like and grab those colors and use them. Well, let me show you how this is done and I guarantee you're gonna love this, so stick with me here. So find your libraries icon, mine's right here. Just click that and open up your libraries. Now, if your libraries aren't open, just come up to window and find libraries and make sure it's checked on. Just check it on and you'll open up your libraries. Now, right now my library is opened up to gradients. If I go back here, see where it says gradients, click this. Here's all my libraries. If you want to add a new library, you can come down here and add a library. But for now, I'm just going to put my gradients that I'm going to create in a library called gradients. So I'm going to open that up. Now, right now, I don't have any gradients in here. You'd see them sitting right in this area right here. I don't have any. So what we need to do is get a gradient. And here's what we need to do. We want to extract it from an image. Now, I have this other image opened up right here. And I like it. And I want to extract the colors from this image and use those for color grading on this image. So here's what we need to do. In this library panel, come down here where you see the plus. You see this plus right here? Click this plus. And you're going to notice you've got some options here. Create from an image, foreground color, graphic, and add all. All we're going to use is this one right here. Create from an image. Click this. And when you do, if you have an image on a layer, as a pixel layer, it's going to open that image up. And right now you see it's in a bunch of different patterns here, which is really cool. We'll do another video on patterns, but let this tweak your interest here. But you can make different types of patterns here. It's really neat. And then you can also turn this image into a shape. Uh, you can grab colors out of here, make color themes, and you can choose those from like color mood, like colorful or bright. And it's going to extract those type of colors from your image, like muted colors. Pretty cool stuff, right? But the one I'm interested in today is gradients. So click on gradients. And by the way, say we were going to color grade this image. Right now I'm going to steal the colors from it. But what if we were going to color grade it? Then I could come up here to the plus. Click on the plus and it'll open up my file browser. And I can just point it to any image that I want. So you can do that as well. But we're going to steal the colors from this image. By the way, you can move this window around. You can resize it if you'd like. And you'll notice right here, see where it says gradient stops? Now, it is giving us three stops. Here's one, two, and here's my third stop right here. It's kind of hidden back here, but that's my third stop. Now, you could change that to a different amount of stops. Like, I can change this to eight stops. I can change it to 14 stops. Now, I find I get the best results when I use like basically like three stops. So I'm going to leave it on three stops. Now it's going to pick colors that it thinks you may want. And a lot of times that's, that is really good. Now, normally on a gradient, your highlight colors will be on the right hand side of the gradient and your shadows will be on the left. Now this is reverse of what I would want, but that's not a big deal because we can reverse gradients very simply. And I'll show you that here shortly. So don't worry about that so much. So this is the shadow color right here. So I can determine, do I want this as my shadow color or do I want to move it? See, I can move these around and I might say, you know what? I want more of these red, dark red, reddish brown tones to be my shadow color. And I want this color to be around the midtones. And for my highlights, maybe I want to warm up my highlights. Right now it's picking a very neutral highlight, but I can take it down into here and get like a warmer highlight but I can move that around. And, uh, and you'll notice when I click on this, you see that big, that larger circle. The crosshatch is really the area I'm pointing to, but that's showing me a blow up of the area that I'm at, if that makes any sense. But say right there. So now I got my shadows, my midtones and highlights. Now it's reversed. Like I said, normally I'd want my shadows on the left, but not a problem. And also you'll see here's my swatches over here. And it also gives me the hexadecimal number for these swatches too. So that's kind of nice. Then all I have to do at this point is say, click on save to CC libraries. 
close this, and there's my gradient right there. Pretty cool, right? Now, there, you're not done yet. Follow me very carefully here. What you need to do next, because what we want to do is add it to our gradient. See this icon right here? This is where our, all our gradients live inside of here, okay? Now, that gradient doesn't go in there by default. What you need to do is, let's go back to my library. Let's open it back up. What you need to do is right-click on here and see where it says Create Gradient Preset. Click on that, and it's going to let you give it a name. I'm just going to keep this name Capture Gradient 1. You can give it any name you want and click OK. And once you do that, and then you click on your gradients, it's going to be the last gradient here. Now, these other gradients that you see here are gradients that I have extracted from other images. Now, you can organize your gradients. Now, these are all your different folders, and a lot of these come right with Photoshop. Now, you can make your own folders too, and you'll notice this folder says Dave's Gradients. If I open it here, you see here's some of the gradients that I've made for myself that I like to use. But you could come down here, see where it says group or this icon. This is a group icon. Just click this and it'll create a new group. You can give it a name and store your gradients there. But to take gradients and move them into a group, all you have to do is click a gradient like this one. I click this and I could drag it and put, put it right inside that group. Now when I open that group up, it's going to be that first gradient right there. Okay. Now if I wanted to put these all in at once, I could Click the last one, select it, hold the shift key down and select the first one. Then I can drag all these and put them all up into that group. Okay, I'm going to leave them out for now, but it's good to organize your gradients. Okay, we've extracted this gradient from this image here and I want to use it on this image. So how do we do that? We can go ahead and shut off our gradients right now. Let's come down to adjustment layers and let's grab a gradient map adjustment layer. Now, whenever you click Gradient Map Adjustment Layer, whatever color your swatches are on, that will be the color that are applied to your, to your image. In other words, it'll remap your image with those colors. So I'm going to click on Gradient Map, and you see I have a nice black and white image here. By the way, gradient maps are great for making black and white images, as you can see right here. Now, how do I put the gradient that I've just extracted from that image onto this image? All you need to do is come here, click right here and you're going to find the gradient editor opens up and here's the gradients, right? And here's the last one that I've extracted, capture gradient one. So we click on this and there it is. It, it, it puts it onto my image. Now we can go ahead and say, okay, and shut the gradient editor off for now. But remember I told you it's kind of reverse because normally you, your highlights you want on the right side and your shadows on the left. Not a problem. See where it says reverse here? Just click reverse and now it's mapped properly. Now it doesn't look like a negative type image. Okay, now this dither is for, if you're starting to see banding in your images, you can click dither on, it'll add a little bit of noise and kind of hide any banding issues. I generally don't have that problem because I usually like to use 16-bit um, images versus using 8-bit images. They're more, uh, or a higher resolution. So I don't normally have banding issues. I'm not saying I can't, but if you do, you can click dither on. But for now, we're not gonna use that but it's mapped that color onto my image. Now we are not done yet. Now let's see what we can do to make this image look better. Now right now we're in the normal blend mode. Now blend modes are very important when you're color grading. And color grading is doing nothing more than altering the flavor of your image by altering the colors up a little bit. In other words, you may want to warm your image up a little bit with color grading or cool it down or just add a nice stylistic look to it by altering the colors a bit. And a lot of times subtlety is your best friend when you're doing color grading, okay? So right now we're in the normal blend mode. Now I can simply take the opacity and start to ease it back and I could get a nice little look there like here's the before and here's the after. So that's a very subtle color grading just in a normal blend mode and that works. Okay, let me take it back up to 100% opacity. Now blend modes are your friend here. Now you could use blend modes like multiply. You can use uh, screen for uh, color grading. And it depends on the image whether a certain blend mode will be better than another blend mode. Now. Overlay is a really good one, as you can see right there. It adds like a nice contrasty look and it blends the colors really well. Or soft light. Soft light is probably my favorite, but look at that right there. That is beautiful. Soft light. And then another very good blend mode would be hue. Now what hue does is it maps the color 
the colors of the uh, gradient just to the parts of the image that have color. You'll notice like her shirt didn't have color, so it doesn't change anything there, okay? So that's a good one. And then another good one is color. And color just adds the color on top of the image, kind of like normal, but it's a little, it's, you're still seeing a lot of the luminosity showing through, which is a really good one. It's one of my favorites color. Now I could take this opacity and just start to pull it back like that. And I can get a really nice subtle color grading on it. But for this image, what I think I'm going to do is use soft light. So let's come here to the soft light blend mode. And it is one of my favorites the soft light blend mode, and I really enjoy this one a lot. Now, I can take this opacity if I feel it's too strong and start to pull back on it. That's 75%. Let me take it back to, I think, right around 70%. Here is the before and here's the after. So I took the color from this image, extracted it, and turned it into a gradient and applied it to this image by using a gradient map. Here's the original image, and here's the final result after applying the gradient map, adding the color grading. Well, I hope you'll go ahead and give this a try for yourself. It's really cool. Find some favorite images, you know, go online or whatever, find some stuff. You can do screenshots or whatever, and then just open up your library module and uh, click the plus here, uh, create from image. And you may want to go back and watch my tutorial again. It took me a while to figure this out, but you'll find it's really simple to do. After you do it a couple times, you'll be like, ah, this is simple to do, Dave. No problem whatsoever. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Cully. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!